Hi, in this video I'm going to use interferons to analyze video interferograms. Alright, here's a video interferogram. This um, is a recording of the movement of fringes as the reference uh, path length is varied in an interferometer. Um, this can give us uh, improved accuracy and, uh, and uh, improved performance compared to the use of a static interferogram. As usual, the first thing I'm going to do is define a boundary. Again, the boundary has to be accurate because um, inaccuracies in centration or radius can result in uh, incorrect assessment of the contribution of different uh, uh, aberrations to the wavefront. This is an aspheric optic. It's a paraboloid. Um, so, uh, let's get the uh, phase shifting window open. I'm going to use a uh, point density of uh, a point every two pixels. What that uh, does is it, it um, calculates the height at each at each point. So in this case, the height will be calculated every two pixels. And uh, then we just click this, perform video analysis, and it calculates the relative uh, phase of each point in the array. And um, The resulting uh, surface is stitched together and provides a fairly continuous um, and pretty nice looking surface. There are little glitches here on the edges, but uh, very, very small ones. This feature here, this feature is again a clip that holds the optic in its stand, in its test stand. So you can see it has a little uh, uh, noise there because it's trying to stitch together something that's varying too rapidly. Now to get um, coefficients for the optic, I'm going to use the annular Zernike polynomials because it's an annular aperture. And um, we have the, um, the surface. Again, as usual, we can create a report here include peak to valley and again we'll create a new directory that uh, specifically for the report there are video, there are uh, plots that are saved in that directory that are uh, um, nice to have, nice to be able to find. All right, and here is the report. As you can see, the height unit is waved because we're using, um, we're, we're plotting the wave front. And um, that's a 3D model of the surface. And um, there you go. Now I'm going to open a second interferogram. This second one is, is one that I created using a... Um, a um, Zernike panel. It, it has 0 0.2 astigmatism, 0 0.2 RMS astigmatism, and uh, so hopefully after we do the analysis, we'll recover that.
All right, we get the phase shifting analysis window open again, and we'll set the point density. There are 100 frames in this video. Uh, you can you can see what it looks like. It's gone through about three cycles of of the um, uh, fringe pattern. So we'll set the point density again at two pixels, and that that parameter should be verified using um, uh, coarser uh, spacing until it's clear that the resolution or the, the result is not changing with finer spacing. All right. And here's the result. And it has significant tilt in it, so that you can see the fringes. The stitching artifacts around the edges are visible, but very small. We can create a report for this one. And the result is a report, similar to the previous one. This one uh, hopefully will show the, uh, the amount of aberrations that we've got. As you can see, see, I have to zoom in a little bit so you can see the The amount of astigmatism is 0 0.199. It's, uh, it was originally specified at 0 0.2, so it's an accurate um, and nice looking result. All right, thank you very much. This uh, concludes the demonstration of video interferogram analysis using Interfringe. Other features are documented in other videos. Thank you.